you're restoring a car, you know, you're going to find those things that, you know, you need to address. And one of them, like on the set of fender skirts, is, is there's a seal that goes actually between the fender skirt and the body. Um, you know, uh, attaching this fender seal is relatively straight up, you know, we can use, we can use a, a, an actual weather strip adhesive, and we'll certainly use that. But to, if you're going for originality, you know, what they used back then was a staple. And if you've ever, you know, even early Mustangs and in a lot of cars, you'll see like where the weather strips and seals are actually stapled to the metal frames around them. And in the case of these fender skirts, you know, these uh, seals were originally stapled onto the fender skirts. So we're going to actually go through the process of how to recreate those staples as well as to attach the seal with an adhesive. So we'll actually have two means, both a mechanical and a chemical means to attach these, uh, these seals on these skirts. And, and you can use this process not only on fender skirts, but on you know, radiator seals and, and a number of different areas where you've got seals that are actually stapled onto the frames. So let's get started. You know, to start, you know, we want to make sure all these holes that we have are open. And by that, I mean it's big enough that we're going to actually be able to fit something through, through the process of getting painted and, and everything. A lot of times they get filled up with paint and, and, you know, fillers or anything else that you've applied to the surface. So we'll actually start by cleaning those out. And because we're going to be creating our staples using a stainless steel safety wire, we'll basically, you know, we want to make sure that once we drill these out that we can actually get the wire through the holes. And that looks like a good fit. Okay, we'll go around and we'll finish up drilling these holes out. And you may find that there's even a couple of places where you'll where you'll need to you know drill new holes uh, on this uh, set of fender skirts. I've uh, also drilled them out for some studs and these are actually studs that I've got threaded into the wheel lip to help align them. It's notorious on, on fender skirts that they kind of don't want to fall into position correctly so you know I've, I, I've come to add a few things to them to get everything to line up and stay where it's supposed to be. And, and there can be nothing more annoying than going down the road and having your fender skirts fall off. So, so I've got a few extra means to actually hold them in place. Okay, we have all of the holes drilled out. Our next step is we got to prep this for actually putting the weather strip adhesive on. And the weather strip is just a a strip then that will actually seal the uh, fender skirt to the body. So when you're driving down the road, you're not getting getting dirt and debris sloshing out in between the uh, skirt and the body and give it a, you know, otherwise it'll kind of give it a kind of a lousy look then and to attach the seal we'll be using just a, a, a black uh, weather strip adhesive 
And weather strip adhesive can usually end up everywhere. It's almost like most uh, gasket cements and, and sealers where you think you've got it uh, confined to one area and before you know it you're looking around and it's all over the place. We want to tape off the area that we're actually going to, we want the adhesive to stay within because so we don't want to end up with this out on the panel itself. And you could put rubber gloves on and do a really nice job of staying clean. But I have found if you uh, just use your finger, you can usually get it spread a little nicer. Because this is a contact adhesive, you know, you don't have to worry about it drying before you actually, you know, finish up here because basically what we're going to do, we're going to put a coat on the, on the fender skirt itself and then we're going to put a thin coat on the rubber gasket. Then between the two, you know, the, the two surfaces will have adhesive on them and as you uh, join them together, they will bond. And that's kind of the way a contact adhesive works. It's uh, not necessary to get them, or actually it's not even advantageous to get them together while they're wet. So you want them to get a little sticky before you uh, join them together. Now that we have the finisher done, we'll get the seal done. Much the same process. Weather strip adhesive is usually available in both yellow and black. The uh, black I tend to like the black because if it gets outside of the seal it doesn't um, tend to show as, show as strangely. Some guys prefer the yellow, they think it hides a little better. Um, it's as much personal preference as, uh, as anything in some cases, you know, because parts of your adhesive actually show, you know, you, there is a, a preference for one or the other. I don't personally like to have any adhesive showing. It's not that pleasant looking. It's not, but uh, in some restorations, the original factory stuff was done in such a manner where the actual adhesive would be visible. Wait, when I, it's still drying a little bit, so we're going to give it just a couple minutes to. firm up before we put it on. 
Okay, we've waited a couple minutes, let the contact cement or the, uh, with this weather strip adhesive kind of seal up some. We're ready to actually put it on. And we'll leave it a little long on the sides right now, on the ends. I don't have enough. So we can go a little bit deep with it. Actually, before I get too far, I'm going to pull the tape. So it doesn't get stuck under the seal. You know, and if everything goes wrong here and you just, you know, you're not happy with the way the, you know, seal is on there or any other aspect of it, you can just pull it off. You can clean up the surface with uh, um, some contact adhesive remover. Um, and go at it again. You know, there's no... Uh, you know, it's not like the kind of thing where there's no going back. So, yeah, if you're not happy with the results or you want to change something, you know, it's just a matter of going back and redoing it. Okay, now to hold everything in place while we're getting everything cut, I'm going to use just a couple of binder clips near the ends, and that will keep everything aligned while we get everything set here. On this end, we've got a little bit of a curve where it shapes around here, so we're going to actually have to notch this a little bit. We'll just use an exacto knife. And a scissor. And again, we'll use a binder clip to hold stuff in position. Okay. Now we can trim off these ends and we'll get those set. So, got a little bit of adhesive sticking out here. Get those cleaned up. Easy, easy, just a matter of rubbing that stuff off.
get a little more adhesive down in this corner. I'm going to pull this free a little bit. Get a little deeper cut on my V here. that while it dries. We'll move to the other end. All right, next is we're going to recreate these staples. And to do that, like I mentioned, we're going to use uh, basically stainless steel safety wire. You know, originally those were steel staples and in some machine in the factory that probably, probably cost more than any stapler you can imagine. But, uh, the, uh, it, I can imagine it took a lot of force to actually take a steel staple, drive it through rubber seal, and fold it over and attach it to a piece of metal. But uh, while, while to the uh, hobbyist there's nothing like that available, but we can recreate that look of original factory staples. And to do that, we're going to We've already pre-drilled those holes out. Now we have to drill through the rubber seal itself. And, and it's just a matter of going back the same way we did this before and, and drilling out those holes. We'll take a piece of safety wire We'll actually create a staple. And to do that, you know, we'll just use our needle nose pliers. Create a hard bend. Now that the idea here is to find the exact distance of that crown. I wish you could spend a lot of time measuring and getting them right. But safety wire is cheap. It doesn't take long to actually make these. So we'll just kind of zip it out. And if it fits, it fit. If we're off, we'll know how to alter it. It looks like that crown is just a little too wide on this one. So we'll make another one. We could adapt that one or we could just make another one. By the time we straighten the other one out, it'll end up kind of messed up anyway. So we have a, a pattern now to actually go in and create one that's just a little narrower. I think that might be better. Yeah, that's just a little narrower.
check that to see if it's the right width. That looks like a good fit. Okay, it actually staples through the other side. You can see the holes we, we drilled are present and we'll just put the staples into the hole there. And fold over the ends on the bottom. And to do that, we can use our needle nose pliers, crimp them down tight. And this recreates the look of, you know, the factory staples that you'll see in most, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s cars. And uh, it, uh, without having to go out and buy yourself a half million dollar machine. And we'll just continue that process around this skirt. Now we've got not only a, a chemical, a bond with the weather sealant, but we'll also have, you know, the factory looking staples all the way around here. And we'll be ready to get these on the car.